All right, now let's produce a graphic that visualizes two variables at the same time. In previous videos, I showed you how to produce a simple bar chart based on just one variable, uh, basically which faculties students attend. Then I showed you how to visualize um, one continuous variable. And we looked at the histogram of H, how is H distributed, and also we produced a box plot of H, which is a sort of a continuous variable. Um, and now we're going to actually consider two variables. We're going to start off with two categorical variables. And we're going, we're going to produce a what's called stacked and group bar chart, right? A stacked bar chart is that you have a bar that is stacked onto each other, right? And um, a group bar chart is a uh, bars that appear grouped next to each other, right? So we're going to go to R here and um, we're going to check whether students that have a working class background um, are more or less likely to also have a part-time job while they're studying, right? It could be that they sort of have less money available, uh, their parents aren't rich, so they, their parents don't fund their studies, and uh, which means they just have to work more and maybe have less time to um, do homework or invest time in, uh, you know, in actually studying. So this is the, the basic question. Let's, let's take a quick look at um, each variable just using the table function, right, to see what we're dealing with here. So the job variable is basically, yes, they have a part-time job or no, they do not. Um, and when we look at working class, it's also a categorical variable, in this case, a binary variable, where we just have no and yes, yes, they are, have a working class background or no, they do not. So, um, we can have a simple stacked bar chart again using the ggplot function and including our data frame, uh, listing the aesthetics, defining now on the x-axis um, whether students have a job or not. And we're going to use the fill argument here to tell R that we want the bars to be filled by another variable, which in this case is working class. This will split up the bars and produce a, a stacked bar chart. The, um, well, let's run that to show you just what it looks like. Again, it's empty here because we just have the plot area defined with the ggplot. But we see here whether people have a job or not and whether this information is not available. And then we're going to add here with the plus sign the geombar function, just empty. So what R is then going to do automatically is just um, list the counts. Okay, so we're adding how many students by job category and by working class. So we see here that students who do not have a part-time job and are working class are uh, you know, roughly under, under 200. And it seems there are way more students who, are, who do not have a job and who are not working class. And just by looking at actually the number of students, the frequencies. And we see here that people that do have a job, it seems like a higher proportion here uh, is from a working class background, right? So we can directly compare. However, we do not want this, we don't want to compare the absolute numbers, right? Because it's hard to compare between groups. We want to convert this into percentages and have actually a stacked bar chart that adds up to 100%. So you can do this with um, an argument called position equals fill. So you're going to have the same argument so forth uh, the only difference here is that we're going to actually exclude missings on the job variable, right? We don't. We want to kick out students where we don't have information on whether they have a job or not. So we're get, getting rid of this third column here uh, through the filter function that you're familiar with. Um, so we're going to filter them out first. Then we pipe and we say ggplot function, same as before, but we're going to add the geombar function here and within it the argument position equals fill um, in quotation marks. This will convert the plot into a stacked bar chart that adds up to 100. And now we can directly compare the percentages. And you see for students that do have a job, the, the, the proportion of the, the percentage of them that are from a working class background is way higher than for students who do not have a job, right? So that's, that's already quite interesting and informative. Now, what I also add here is actually um, 
changing how the y-axis is defined. And that you can do this by adding an argument called scale underscore y underscore continuous and then label equals scales percent. So this just tells R to convert the y-axis into percentages. And then I'm adding also a, a label here for the y-axis and call it percentage. So let's run the whole command this time, call on the object, and you see now um, we have percentages on the y-axis here, a new nice label. Uh, this is the legend here. This is our stacked bar chart. Now let's do a group bar chart. So basically we do not want them stacked onto each other. We want them next to each other, right? We want to break it down by different groups. We're going to start in a, in a fairly similar way. We're going to um, call on the students data set. We're going to filter out students that do not have a job. And then we're actually going to group by uh, the job category and the working class category. Remember the group by just finds unique combinations of these two uh, variables, each possible combination, right? And, and it breaks, breaks down the data by them. And then whatever operation we tell R to do, it does it uh, separately for each grouping. Okay, so we group by job and working class, and then we use the summarize function to just count how many students are in each of these categories. Remember, we're doing this to actually calculate percentages um, based on the groups. Okay, so let's do that. Bar grouped, we have job, working class, and the number of students in each, each bracket. Then we're going to calculate on, uh, based on those totals, right? Based on those counts, we're going to co convert it to a percentage, basically dividing each uh, count of students by the sum of the students in each category and then uh, multiplying it by 100, it turns it into percentages. So in this particular case, we're actually creating a data frame that only contains numbers that we want to display in, in the ggplot graph here, okay? So um, this is our data that we produced. And actually now within the same code and within the same chunk of code, we're gonna add the ggplot. ggplot is very consistent with the piping and the tidyverse way of, of arranging code. So you can just add it within the same code line and, and just through, through a pipe operator, go straight into ggplot. Um, and now at the x axis, we have job, uh, the job category at the y-axis we have this new variable that we created which is percent the percent of students in each category we divide it up by a uh, working class um, and actually now we're going to change the position from um, uh, fill which is producing a stacked bar chart to dodge which is um, producing a group bar chart in addition we're going to add here comma stat identity which just tells ggplot use the data that's in the data set that I'm providing you, do not calculate any, any statistics. Previously, you know, we have had R uh, calculating the number of students per category automatically by default, right? Um, we did not first create the data set and let, that, and let then R produce the graphics. So if we do want to just exactly visualize what's in the data, we need to add this argument here, stat equals identity, right? So let's do that, see what it looks like. Okay. This is a group bar chart. And we see here, we see here, uh, the colors are working class or not working class. We have on the x-axis job or no job and here we have the percentages um, last let's produce a group bar chart here which doesn't show our percentages but actually shows a mean right so we can use two variables one is actually continuous and the other one is categorical and let's produce a group bar chart for this situation let's for example compare the average life satisfactions of students that are single versus students that are in a relationship right who's who's happier in a way um, okay, and we're going to follow the same routine. Let's first um, call our student data set, prepare the data that we want to visualize first in a data frame and then visualize it. Okay, we're going to turn, uh, convert our life satisfaction uh, variable into numeric variable. We have covered that in previous videos. 
we're going to filter out missing values on the relationship variable and we're going to group by relationship and then we're going to produce the average and reduce the data set using the summarize function to containing the mean life satisfaction by relationship status using the mean function here let's just do that um, to show you what the data frame looks like now we have in a relationship or single in here have we have the average life satisfaction and then we're going to continue this code chunk with the pipe operator and go straight into ggplot we're going to call on ggplot now we want on the x-axis the relationship status and on the y-axis we actually want the mean life satisfaction and we want this to be displayed in bars and um we and therefore we call the geom bar uh, function and in it we tell r to just use the numbers that we provide um, in the data frame that's currently currently active and that is the argument stat equals identity as before we are changing um, the format of the y axis and we're going to give it a different name and actually limit it to zero to 100 because we're dealing with um, uh, a scale here from 0 to 100 in terms of life satisfaction. Lastly, we're going to change the theme to uh, black and white. If we run all that and then call on the graphic, this is what it looks like. Right, and it's showing that life satisfaction is not dramatically different. I guess that's a good news for everyone. Um, however, it's slightly higher for students that are in the relationship. Okay, you can produce grouped charts, not just for bar charts, but for any type of chart. And I'm going to just briefly show you how to do the same thing for a box plot and then an onion plot. So you can just vary the geom that you use in ggplot and it's going to produce a different type of graph, but the logic is the same, right? You could group different statistics and you, you tell R what you want on the y-axis, what you want on the x-axis, and, and you go from there. So let's quickly run through the examples. The code is in the online course. It's all there. So um, I'm just not going to explain every detail here, but just run through and tell you what it looks like. So first, a box plot. Now we see that we can actually compare the distribution of uh, age, what we produced before on the video on, on box plots, across different faculties. And we see, well, the, me the median age doesn't really, really very much, but we now see where our outliers are. It turns out that the, one, the person that's 80 year old in our data set is in the business faculty. And the person that's really young, like 10 years old, is in the economics faculty. Maybe a really bright child, who knows. Um, so, and, and the only difference here is that you use the geom box plot uh, uh, function. Um, and again, you have position dodge to indicate that you have a grouped, um, grouped setup. Um, next one up is an onion plot, which is very similar to a, uh, a box plot. It just looks slightly different, right? Um, so it has these onions or violins, as they're called, rather than box plots. And it, it shows you the, the distribution of the whole uh, sample for each uh, uh, faculty, uh, faculty here. And um, it looks, looks way better. Um, we also have now different colors for each faculty and, and a legend. And we did that here by adding fill faculty. Okay. Here, slightly even nicer box plot. Um, in this case, we, we added we added box plots within the violin plots, right? So this is just to show you there, there are really no limits to what R can do with graphics. You can combine different things, different layers. Um, but the main point here was to show you that, you know, the grouping logic doesn't just work for bar chart. It works for any type of charts that you would like to produce. 